Hi everybody, Chuck and John here. Uh, we just seen on the Energetic Science Forum under the Earthlight, uh, Jeffrey Miller had posted a picture of one of the crystal lamps and um, didn't look anything like any of ours. This one here has been running a couple of years and uh, the only thing we put in it is distilled water. I have put a few times regular tap water in it or you know, regular drinking water, spring water, what have you. Um, we preform these alum cells with the cooked copper in the alum and add water to them one time just to harden them for shipping purposes. Um, that's how they sit forever. And as you can see, this one has been in running for a couple of years and didn't turn those colors. Kind of curious to what uh, Jeffrey had put in there, um, or if it's his tap water or whatever. But anyways, just wanted to show you here um, on these. You can see there's no water in that part of the rock. Um, this is what will happen to your magnesium if you use a chlorinated water or a salt type water or anything um, with it. But once again, it doesn't look anything like um, what was just showed on the forum there. This is just regular distilled water here from Walmart. Take a few minutes for that cell to come to life. So anyway, while Chuck's doing that, getting bringing that one up, what I want to do is show you this. These have been sitting in regular copper bowls for ever since the convention. And uh, even uh, we only add distilled water to these. That seems to work the best. Now, he's asking a question to me of what the mix was. I went over this before that Chuck every once in a while to get this thing to work we'll add a pinch of uh, of uh, cream of tartar so and this one now these are pretty darn dry these are dry crystals there's not really any water in these and they they both operate and uh, the reason is they're so big that I wanted to see them dry out and I wanted to see if there's any corrosion of the magnesium here, which I knurled so that it would come up past the, so I could see. And I would be able to see in here if the corrosion was there, but as you can see, they're running. These have their own built-in oscillators and everything, so I wanted to make sure that... Uh, that you're not adding anything that's that's uh, can cause that degradation. So we'll be right back with this cell. Sorry about that. I ran out of a battery. Anyway, Jeffrey, here's one running right here. I mean, it's been dry since the conference. Check this out of water, and uh, you can see that it's there. As he explained to you, the only difference that we experimented with to save the magnesium a little was uh, cream of tartar, right, Chuck? Just a pinch of it. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. So, I don't know what's going on with your cell. I just have never seen anything like that. And I've got all kinds of them here. Because that's what Chuck and I do, is we work on them all day long. Once again, I'll show you this over here. Be right back. Okay, once again, Chuck and John here. And we're going to activate another one. We just pulled that one off. That was the fired copper, the Cooper's copper. Here's just the normal copper. An alum cell, dry. Ones we made it to show uh, haven't activated, so here goes the first try on that. There it is. It's activated. Just like that. And you can see our voltage here. 
Just climb, climb it out. Right up on it. So and that's how easy it is to do these alum cells. And they shouldn't really change colors or do anything on you. They'll grow a little bit, of course. Um, as long as you're just using distilled water in them, they should be fine. Yeah, don't use any salt water or chlorinated water in them. <coughs> or try any experiments with the alum because you're just going to... We have never seen those colors, Jeffrey. That's something new on us, so we were really curious to want to know what you tried, what you put in it, if you put anything in it, because we don't put anything in them here. So, hope that answers some of your questions. <laughs>